Hey everyone, Zach here, and welcome to the 53rd lesson of this RTS tutorial series. In this video, we will set up our first special unit outside of our harvester, which will be our engineer. Our engineer will construct our unconstructed buildings, it will repair our vehicles, and it will repair damaged buildings. That said, thank you for joining me this week. I know we are in the middle of UE4 Game Jam, or the Epic Game Jam, and I wish anyone doing the Game Jam a lot of luck. And if you're watching this after the Game Jam, I hope you did well. That said, fire up your editor and let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome to the editor. So we're going to create our engineering unit. And our engineering unit is going to do three things. It's going to repair buildings, it's going to repair vehicles, and it's going to be the only unit that can construct buildings. Fortunately, repairing buildings and repairing vehicles are fairly similar. And when we set up the repair building, we can also set up the check for our construction. So the first step we're going to do is we're going to duplicate, sorry, we are going to create a child of our unit master that will be our RTS Con uh, engineer unit. Now open up your unit master, open up your engineering unit, and first thing we're going to do in the engineering unit before I forget is open up your unit tab on the right, go to master, go to unit profile, change it over engineer, compile, save, go back to your unit master, let's comment this out so we just don't have things overlapping. This will be our harvester unit events. And I'm going to do a new custom event. And this custom event will be repair damage. I'm going to count this out as our engineer unit events. This commenting out doesn't mean we're done. It's just so I don't get confused and don't forget what I've put in already. We're going to compile save. Just, that way we can pull it up in our engineer unit. All right. So in our engineer unit, we're going to call this event and we are going to do some checks. So let's go to our engineering unit. Let's go to our event graph and down here, let's call that repair damage. We want the add event, not the function, even though this is a function. And we're gonna check at first, is the building or vehicle that we're targeting damaged? So let's do a branch and then we're gonna create a pure function that will answer this conditional statement. So new function and this will be check target health this will be a pure function it will have one output and that output will be is not full health or you put is not at full health you prefer we're gonna break that for now I'm just gonna move this down here we're gonna need more room by the way so what we're gonna do is we're gonna check is our target vehicle valid so do we have a target vehicle if not, then we're going to check, do we have a target building? We should have one or the other, really. But we need to check if either is valid. And we're going to check if both are valid, even if one is valid. So even if the first one, vehicle, is valid, we need to check if the target building is valid. And make sure that if it isn't, because target vehicle is valid, that we just continue on. So what we're going to do is right-click, type in target vehicle. And we want to get the movement detail one here, this target vehicle. No, not the setter, sorry. You might have it as a different category, so it might not be under movement details. It might be under whatever you put it as. So get target vehicle. We're going to then do is valid. We want the one with the question mark because that includes the if statement already. So if this is valid, then what we want to do is we want to check something. And we want to check is the building, sorry, is the vehicle damaged? And the way we're going to do that is we're going to create a new function will be vehicle damaged local and we want to set this at the is valid sorry that's actually not checking that's what we're going to do with the check to check it we're going to put a reroute here and on this reroute off this reroute that is what we're going to do is we're going to get our current health remember we set this up last week this is part of the reason we did that setup last week we're also going to get our max health and we want to know, is our current health less than our max health? If it is, then we are going to set this either as false or true based on the answer. So if this is true, that will be set to true. If this is false, that will be set to false. Now, then what we're going to do, just move this out of the way, 
is we are going to do another is valid check again with a question mark. And this will be for our building. But let's handle what happens if we don't have a target vehicle. This isn't going to be valid. We then want to check if the building is valid. So drag off the is not valid and plug into there. We still have to do this, go through this even if this is valid because we need to get to the end. Oh, sorry, just moving this around so it's a little bit neater and nicer looking. There we go. So if it is not valid, we're going to continue on to the next is valid for the building. If it is valid, we're going to continue on, but it'll go down to the is not valid because only a target vehicle or a target building can be valid. There's only one validity at a time based on our previous video's setups. All right, so we're going to get target building, and we want to get it, and we're going to plug that into there. And we're going to repeat the same process. We're going to use a new function. You know, this actually could be is target damage. We could just use the same variable, but I like having two variables. Just it makes me feel more comfortable. So we'll do building damage local. Plug that into there. And let's plug. Let's just get this all set up. Plug that into there. Put a reroute in. That's way too much room, but hey, it works. We'll do the is valid there move this around move that there there we go and we're gonna do the same thing we did over with the building sorry with the vehicle in the building section now we are going to check our current health so let's get our current health let's also move this out just a tiny bit all right current health and get max health We want to know is our current health less than our max health? If it is, then we're going to set this value to either true or false, depending on again the response. So if it isn't, it'll be false. If it is true, it'll be true up there. And then we're going to pass this information out in the is not full health. So we're going to get the vehicle, we're going to get the building damage, and we're going to do an or statement. So if either of these are true, then the output will be true. Now we don't need to worry about resetting these variables and I'll go over why that is as we get a little bit farther into what we're doing. So there we go. We've now set this. Compile, save, go to your event graph, drag your peer function there, plug it in. All right, so go back into here for a minute. We're going to just copy the, sorry, don't break that like I just did. Select your two is valid statements and your target vehicle and target building. Go to your event graph. Oh, sorry, I skipped a step. Copy these after you select them. Go to your event graph and paste them in. Uh, apparently, I'm not pasting. Let me try that one more time. All right. So, select them. Control-C, copy. Control-V, paste. There we go. If the building is not at full health or the vehicle is not at full health, then we want to go on the true. And we're going to do the target vehicle. Unlike... We did in the check health. We don't need to go through both of these. We only need one or the other. So if the target vehicle isn't valid, then we need to go to the target building. One of these at this point has to be valid because we've gotten through at a valid check in here. We're just making sure which function we need to call next. And I'm going to handle the building stuff first just because we have buildings on the map and it's just the one that I like doing first. And we're going to create a new timer. So set timer by function name. All right, this will be a looping function going off every 0 0.01 seconds. And the function name will be repair building. Right, I'm going to copy that name. I'm going to create a new function. It will be repair building. All right, so. This is going to be very similar to our harvesting and to our building construction events. We're going to have something that's a little bit different, and you might want to include that little difference inside your harvester if you want to try a different way of doing it. And I'll point out what that difference is when we get there. It should be obvious you've been following along with the tutorial. We're going to create one variable, and this will be used for both building and vehicle repairs, and that's going to be our repair time, which I have an extra capital E in there. I'll fix that in a second after making that a float. There we go. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set this. And we are going to set this based on our game time. So set game time. 
We're going to pass the game time into the repair time. We already have delta time from last week's video. We set that up in our parent. So we get our game time, as our sorry, our delta time. So we get that. We have our game speed in the parent as well. We've had that for a while. So we get our game speed. And our initial game time is going to be our repair time. All right, so everything so far is the same as what we've done previously. We're going to have an extra step that is required for our buildings. Now, this next step I'm about to do, you can put either where I put it or one step later. I just like having it a bit early. So what we're going to do is we're going to get our target building. Remember, we already know this is valid because we're inside this function. It wouldn't be uh, possible to have our target building as invalid at this point. Unless it gets destroyed, in which case we'll have events for that later on, but that's a different matter. We're going to do update building health. Remember, we created this in the last video. This updates the health bar above the building. We also need to update the general health. Like I said, you can either do this before the update general health like I have or after. Um, so I like doing it before. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to move this target down here. and We need to get some things from it. We need to get, uh, we need to set and get our current health. So let's do the set current health first. So set current health. All right, plug that into there. Raise that up a bit. Put another reroute in. So it's just nice and neat looking. So we need to give some value into our current health. So we need to get our current current health. That was kind of weird to say. And we are going to add this, something to this. What we're going to add to it is another float, of course. And that result, by the way, is what's going to go into here. But we're going to take this value, and that's what we're going to add in. Let's just move this down so we have a bit of room. But we're not going to just plug that straight into there. Otherwise, it'll go quickly. We need to convert the time over. So we need to change this over to hours. So that is that time 60. But that also means that it's now a little bit way too fast, about 600 percent too fast so we're going to divide this by a hundred this now converts it over to our correct uh, timing or near correct timing actually if you just ran this it would go way too quickly um just like we had with the construction just like we've had with the harvester more like the harvester actually now the next step this is the step i was talking about being different i mean of course this is different but this is functionally the same as what we've done previously. This is the same as updating our unit inventory and harvesting. The next step, what we want to do is actually set our repair time. And by setting our repair time, we're going to set to 0 0.01, we're going to get a consistent, steady repair speed. If we don't have this, the repair time will pick up. It'll start slowly, a little bit faster, a little bit faster, a little bit faster, a lot faster, a lot faster, a lot faster. Um, and it's not how we want that to work. If we put this here, we are going to have a steady repair time. And you can add something like this into your harvest time in your harvester, and you might get a different effect than we currently have. By doing this, however, we aren't timing it perfectly that every percentage is an hour or something. It just keeps a steady repair rate. Now, once we've done these repairs, remember this is looping, we need to say for we need to set a way for it to stop. So once we've done the repairs, remember this is looping. It's going to keep going. So we need to find a way to tell it to stop. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a branch. And we're going to use our earlier conditional statement. We don't need to create anything new here. And this is also the reason why we don't need to worry about resetting the variables. We're going to check our target health. So if you start from the beginning on that outside function here, or on the main graph, we check our target health. This isn't valid because we're doing the building one. So it goes to the uh, is not valid. Our building is valid and it is damaged. It sets that to true. It passes this out. It then triggers, it goes past this target vehicle because it's not valid. It then triggers this timer, which triggers our repair building. Our repair building goes off for some time. Finally, it goes it gets up to this point. Actually, it gets to this point every time. But eventually, this value becomes equal to our, our max health. So it checks it, gets past this target vehicle, goes to this, and goes, oh, hey, this is now no longer less than our max health. What we need to do is we need to set this to false. So that resets the variable for us. Now, because this is a timer, it might accidentally go over 100%. So there's just one step I want to add in. 
which is I'm going to grab this. Uh, actually, I'm going to grab these two variables here, and I'm just going to duplicate them over here. And I also want to get my max health. So get max health. We're going to plug that into the current value just to make sure that it hasn't gone over by accident. And fortunately, we can do this without the wires crossing each other like we had earlier. And I'm just going to move these two bits around just a tiny bit. There we go. So if this is now false, if it is at full health, then we want this to set the building to actually properly be full health so we're not accidentally slightly over. And then we want to, if we go back to our event graph, take this, control C it, paste it into here, and we want to set it to no longer looping. We want the timer at zero. So now we've killed the loop on this function so it won't fire off anymore and that's only when the building is at has been repaired now the last two things we want to do is we want to release the unit that's doing the repairs so we're going to do sorry we're going to get our target building again i'm just going to duplicate that over there with a control w we want to release single occupant and the occupant we want to release is the occupant that's currently running this function so all we're going to do is do a cell. There we go. Plug that into there. And then just to be on the safe side, because we're releasing an occupant, we want to clear the target building. So we are going to do set target building, and we're not going to plug anything into there. So our repair building function is set up. Now we just need to call it in gameplay. And to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to go into our building master, and in our building master, we're going to create some new uh, functions. Now, I don't like this variable name, this function name anymore, because we're going to have a very similar thing uh, to this, but it's not going to have this occupants list. This is just to make sure it should be constructed. So we're going to rename this one. Um, it's under construction. We're going to rename this to check if can construct. So rename check if can construct or should construct, whatever name you want to put it. And it's just, it, the name is too close to the variable, the pure function we're about to create in this, uh, in this step. So we're going to create two new pure functions. And to do so, we need to give ourselves a bit of room. So we're going to take these variables down here on our event begin overlap, and we're going to move them over. And those functions will actually take care of everything on the event tick that's related to construction. So it makes our life easier. We're going to do a new branch between the set, lo uh, set selected local unit and the first branch we have in where it's making sure it's the direct building it's targeting. So we're going to have two new here functions. First one I'm going to do is I'm going to get is under construction. And I want to know if this is true or, we're going to have that or boolean in, the building is not constructed. So is built get is built and then it's going to be not so not bool and I hope I'll remember to put the not in the next step I somehow always seem to forget that so if it's either under construction or it's not built then that will return a true just plug that in there temporarily it just makes doing the next step easier select these four nodes right click it and do collapse to function and this will be check construction status and this will be a pure function. And I'm going to also fix the random random extra T at the end there. Here we go. And the return value will be needs to be constructed. All right. Now we can break this. We're going to leave this here for a second. We need two things to come through here. We need to know is one the building does it need to be constructed and if it does uh, is the unit an engineer unit or not? And actually, I've done this wrong. This should be on the false. Okay, so I'll walk you through the logic of this after we've constructed the next pure function. We're not going to do it in here just because it's a bit complex. Actually, yeah, we're not going to do it in here. We're going to create this new one, which is check engineer. I say it's complex. It really isn't. We have one output, which will be is is engineer 
All right, just move that over a bit. We don't need to break it. We just need a little bit of room. We want to get our selected unit. We want to get the class of this unit. So drag off, get class. We want to know, is this class equal to, so equal, equal, our engineering unit? By the way, if you don't know why I say equal, equal in C++, it is equal, equals the sign you to put in. So if this is true, that will set the is engineer to true. If it's false, it'll set that to false. Compile, save, and then make sure that you actually select a pure function. So I skipped that step. There we go. Set to pure function. I knew I did that even before I changed Windows. Go back to your event graph. And then we're going to get this check engineer. We want to know, is it not an engineer? So we're going to do not here. So not bool. So if both of these statements are true, or actually not true, because we're off the false here, then we are going to check is the to add the unit. So let's think about it this way. Let's go through the logic step by step for a moment here. If the building is not under construction, so that's false, then this is automatically going to be a false statement because one of them is false. We go down there. So I'll add in any unit if the building's already built. So if the building is not yet built, if it needs to be constructed, thus this will be a false, and the unit is not an engineering unit, that not variable at the end there changes that into a the reverse statement. So if it needs to be constructed and it is not an engineering unit, these statements now become a true and we get nothing. It doesn't input anything. But if it is an engineering unit, that is a false statement now because we're now checking is it not an engineering unit. So if that is a false statement, it will carry through onto the false because the building is no longer built and it is an engineering unit. So, or it is not. So it's an engineering unit, which means it is not not an engineering unit. Think about it as a double negative, unfortunately. It's a bit complex, but that is what is happening here. And once that happens, once those statements are both false, it will pass the engineering unit into the building. I will say it took me about 10 minutes to actually figure out how to say that. I kept having to re-record those same lines over and over again. So this will make sure that if the building is under construction, that it will only allow engineering units in, which means that this event will only trigger when it's under construction if there is an engineering unit in the occupants list. If it is not under construction, it doesn't matter what sort of units going in. But what we need it to do at the very end is we need it to trigger our repair event. So we're going to put a branch in. And in our branch, we are going to check, is this an engineering unit again? But this time we do actually want to know, is it an engineering unit? We don't want that double negative statement there. If it is, we want to get our selected unit. And from our selected unit, we're going to trigger our repair damage. OK, so if that's true, then we want to trigger our repair damage. All right, let's go ahead and test this out. So hit, actually, don't hit play. Hit, skip what I just did. Go to your main window. We need to do one more thing. It's really kind of important. We need to put an engineering unit onto the map. There's our engineering unit. So we're going to test our building repair by sending this engineering unit into our barracks there. All right, there we go. We're going to speed. There we go. Went from 50% to 52, or 51 to 52 to 53. And I'm going to pause the video here. I'm going to resume when it's at 97. All right, so here we are at 96, 97, 98, 99, and 100, and it releases the unit. There we go. All right, so one more test we need to do is let's spawn in a silo. Let's spawn in over there. Grab our engineer unit. Actually, sorry, don't grab your engineer unit. Grab the harvester unit you have and try to send that into the building. Oh, go back. Sorry, I grabbed both units by mistake. All right, so we can't send our, our harvester unit in. Let's send it over to the barracks, see if it can get into there. There we go. There's our engineering unit in there. Let's grab our, sorry, our harvester unit. This is our engineering unit. We will do things that make them look visually different later in this section, by the way. Let's send our engineering unit into there. And there we can see the construction has started. That covers the first half of what we need to do for our engineering unit. 
In the second video for our engineering unit, we'll set up our vehicle uh, repair, which will be relatively similar to this, but it just has a lot of um, little bits and bobs that I want to go over. So that said, if you've enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button down below and feel free to join the Discord. Let me know what's working for you. Hit the subscribe and notify icon so you know when the next tutorial is out. And as always, I look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial, and I hope that you have a wonderful day.